start off by, who are you? Nicole. And what is this event? This is our first ever Bendigo seed swap event. So we're giving it a go today. And how do you think it went? I think it's been really good. We've had heaps of people come through. We've had heaps of seed get put on the tables. Lots of people walking out with stashes of seeds to their garden. Um, and we'll be able to build a seed library for Old Church on the Hill for everyone to access. So what was the motivation behind actually doing this? Today we had a few motivators. We wanted to get community together. We wanted to meet other people growing. We wanted to meet other people that are saving seed. But mostly we're trying to encourage people just to give it a go and to say it, seeds can be free. We can grow food in our garden and you don't, it doesn't have to be complicated. Do you think this will uh, continue or we'll do this again? Yeah, I think we're going to try and run these every quarter. So to go with the seasons, in summer we're thinking we'll run it along with a bring your excess produce swap because we'll all have too many zucchinis. <laughs> um, so we'll see how that one goes too. And you had a guest speaker today and what's he going to speak speaking about? Yeah, Greg came along today. He's, been, he's going to speak about... Um, the basics of seed saving, so he's going to go through uh, how to save seed, what to do with it, um, and some of the, the the main tips, I guess. And he's from Very Useful Seeds, which is a Bendigo local company. And um, people can find and swap seeds. You have a Facebook group or something like that? There is a Bendigo Seed Savers group. Um, people can go to so that's kind of where we've operated from um, this is a new new thing to us so watch this space we might put extras out later first up seed save seed saving is not complicated seed saving is easy um, there's a whole lot of myths around seed saving seeds are really resilient um, and there's a whole lot of paranoia about keeping seeds pure, about seed purity, so on the whole, um, seed purity is mostly a myth because if two parents are both good to eat, the offspring are going to be good to eat. Um, children resemble their parents and so being paranoid about keeping everything separate I think is a bit... Um, with a few exceptions, um, something that it doesn't really matter that much. Um, in most ways, it doesn't matter if things don't breed true, because we're not trying to sell to Coles and Woolworths. So if we just want to feed ourselves, diversity, genetic diversity, will give us more resilience in our plants and um, reduce inbreeding. There's a couple of issues around seed saving. So the easiest to save are annuals, plants that grow in one year and make flowers and make seeds and um, then you can just collect the seed in one season. And a good example of that is lettuce. So lettuces will grow and then they'll bolt and then they'll turn into flowers and they have perfect flowers and they pollinate themselves. So they don't need insects to pollinate and they rarely cross. Trying to breed um, lettuces is really difficult because they usually pollinate themselves before you've had a chance to interfere with them. And to collect seed off lettuce, is really very easy. If you want to get the best and the purest seed, you walk out into your garden and when your lettuce heads look like that, and you shake it into a bag. And the fattest and ripest lettuce seed ends up there. And that gets you the best high quality and cleanest seed. If you want to take the tops off, and um, so we're talking about dry seed processing here. If you want to take that top off and then grind it all up and get every single seed out of it, you're going to give yourself a couple of hours of cleaning to try and get rid of all the stuff, that, the excess stuff. Um, but for example, one little flower head 
can give us. Oh, wow. You know, like My 20 or 30 seeds. So, um, lettuce seeds. Yeah, that's the other thing. Plants produce huge numbers of seed. Don't try and collect every seed. Just collect the best seed. And the best seed will give you the best plants the next year. Um, another annual, for example, tomatoes. Grow over summer, turn into fruits. The fruits ripen up. You just get the tomato. The quickest and easiest way is just to get the tomato, get some paper towel, Do that. Dry that on a paper plate. And then there's your tomatoes for next year. There is a suggestion that the little bits of gel that are around each tomato seed um, have some germination inhibitors in them. So they'll make the germination slow down. What you can do is squeeze into a cup let it ferment and get mould on it for about three or four warm days and then pour it through a sieve and all of that gel will disappear. But this works. Yep, that's how all of our wonderful Italian tomatoes got smuggled into Australia back in the 60s and 70s. Um, the other thing that you really need to do, label, label, label. So, tomato, tasteless supermarket. <laughs> and the month. So, 7 22. So, that's ready. Put that out somewhere warm, not super hot, and just let that dry fold it up and pop it in a Ziploc bag. We're ready for next summer. Another wet one that's easy to do are capsicums and chilies. And they're one of the ones that are worth isolating because the, the single gene that turns on heat in capsicums will get transferred around between your caps sweet capsicums and hot chilies and it's dominant. In other words, all of the children will inherit at least one copy of the hot gene. So your sweet capsicums will all become hot. So they are worth isolating. Now a way around that, grow one of the other species of capsicums as your chili and grow sweet capsicums and then they can grow next to each other. So this one's called Argi Limon. Um, it's a Solanum baccatum. Um, which is different. Sorry, I'm going to get nerdy. Um, but these chilies are really, really easy. Does anyone eat chili here? Like chili? Yeah? Have a little bit of that. It's hot, but it's lemon flavoured. So, to get the seeds out. Hot? It's a chili. Beautiful flavour though. It is really good. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it is. It's really, it's really lemony. It's a beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful um, chili. Uh, don't touch your eyes. Um, so just scrape out the seeds from the inside. Pop them on a paper plate. Let them dry. Label them. Once they're dry, put them away. Clear on what you were saying. Do you, are you suggesting you grow that one next to red chilies? No, next to your red capsicum. Next to your ordinary capsicum. Yeah, so and they won't belts, cross. Because they're different species. But most hot ones, most hot ones are the same species. But there's seven different species of capsicums that we can eat, but we really only ever eat one. You yeah, yeah. And then scratch it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just um, so you just take it out, get the big fat seeds out of the inside. We're in business. How can you tell the difference between 
flower colour, um, flower shape and seed colour. The leaf shapes are also different but they've also been hybridised a bit so some of them are a little bit mixed up um, but yeah they don't tend to cross that much but they might. Um, then we've got so what we've done is annuals and we've done dry seeds <laughs> and wet seeds. So the dry seeds are the ones that you can just harvest, dry them off a little bit and put them in a bag and they're right. Wet ones come out of fruits. And the other one you could do, which is a pretty standard one, um, this is from a mass crossed um, butternut pumpkin cross. So I just got every diverse short compact butternut pumpkin that I could find, grew them all together with no water and no fertiliser, and the ones that gave me good fruit got growing the next year. Then you pick the tastiest and nicest ones out of them, grow them again the next year, let them all have sex with each other. It, you want to pick some of the good ones and some of the bad ones so that you're keeping the genetic diversity going. Um, and this is something that I'm really getting into called land race gardening, but that's another whole lecture. So if we want to save seeds from my A2 pumpkin, um, some of these didn't set good seed. I got two flushes of growth last season and the early ones, the early fruit, were there long enough to really fatten their seeds up, but it looks like the second flush had lots and lots of um, unviable seeds in them. So there's our seedy bit. Scoop that out, wash that, like just mush it up in, the, in some water, pour off that bad stuff and then just dry the seed on some um, paper towel and label it. Yeah, and the way to tell when your seeds are nice and dry and dry enough to put away is when you bend them in half, they crack. If you're drying beans or peas or corn, go outside with a hammer, put one on top of a brick, whack it with the hammer, if it squishes, keep drying. If it shatters, put it in a bag, label it, and it's ready for next year. And for seeds of cucurbits, you'll get a mix of good seed and bad seed in, the, in your seed mix, because not every single seed is going to turn into a good one. But to get a good one, if we... Chop that in half. Can you see there's meaty stuff inside there? Mm -hmm. That little white pulpy bit? Yep. So that's going to be a good seed. So if we have a look there, um, you can see that it's not hollow and there's good uh, flesh, if you like, inside there that we'd try and dry off. Um, Just the whiteness. Yeah, the whiteness inside. And they don't flex. When you bend them, you can tell they're solid. So, that's a lovely pumpkin. It's a ripper. Um, low in fibre, small seed cavity, small size so you can eat it in one serve, um, and a pretty good flavour too. And lovely colour. Pumpkiny and sweet. Does anyone want to try some? Not in, do you eat zucchini? Why not? Mm. Lovely colour. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so um, if you mix up genetics, you've got more chance of selecting something that you want uh, 
in the second and third and fourth years, if you keep growing the same thing over and over and over, there's going to be, because it's really inbred, there's not enough genetic diversity there to give you diversity, to give you things to pick from. So I'm a huge fan of crossing stuff up, but then I've got a huge garden. So tomatoes are a bit harder because you've actually got to fiddle with their sex bits. Um, but yeah, you can do it. Um, so we've done dry and wet annuals. Then we've got... So biennials, you plant a seed and that turns into a plant. Yeah, and then usually develops a root underneath the soil. And then in winter, it goes to sleep under the soil. And then next summer, it goes, oh, I better have babies. So what it then tends to do is throw up a seed head in the second summer. So it's taken two years biennial for it to develop its seed. That is parsnip and carrot and um, radicchio is there as some, some is there as well. And in a different family is the onions and leeks and chives and garlic, but garlic's, we've bred garlic for 2,000 years and it doesn't have sex anymore. There is no genetic diversity in garlic. Um, well, you can't, you can't drive genetic diversity. So there's a lot of people working on making garlic's flower again. But again, that's another whole story. So how do I process? This is um, from my mass cross leek project where I've got every leek that I could and let them flower together. So to... So leek seed, and to clean that off, you just go outside and do that, and there's all your clean seed left behind. Um, collect lots and lots and lots of sieves if you want to get into seed saving. The other thing too that you might notice, um, if you want to get every seed, that you'll end up with these tiny little seed capsule balls that have got seeds inside them and that are really difficult to extract the seed from. Um, so you can grind them right up and try and get the seed out. And then you end up with stuff that's almost impossible to separate. And the trick with that is get your nice dry seed with all the fluff on it, throw it into a jar full of water, shake it up, pour the floaties off the top and all of the good seed sinks to the bottom and then really quickly drain it out and dry it like within five minutes or so. And you'll end up with really beautiful, clean, dry seed. Um, if you don't do that and you've got really lots of other stuff in there, what's the implications? It's hard to oh, it, um Because I'm selling seed, yeah. it's I need to sell, yeah. But the other thing too is Oh, and that's one other thing, bugs. So if you collect a whole lot of chaff and straw and extraneous stuff, you'll have bugs with bug eggs in it, and they're the bugs that like to eat seeds. And so if you don't control those bugs, you're gonna end up with a whole lot of chaff, really healthy insects, and no seed. Or hollow, hollow seed, yeah. Um, and just, I might actually wind up in a sec, but um, 
when you're out in the garden, you want to harvest the stuff when you put it in the bag and label it. So harvest into a cardboard box or whatever stops it from blowing away. If you go into paper bags, make sure the corners are glued nice and tight because all the small seed will fall to the bottom of the bag. You'll walk inside and it'll run out the corner of the bag. Um, label your produce when you harvest it. Label your produce when you process it. Label your, your seed when you put it away. And I double label everything. So I have a label on the outside of the bag and a label on the inside of the bag. Because you empty the seed out and you go, oh, which bag did that come from? Which label was that? So, um, storing so you don't get eaten by bugs is really important. And what I do with all my seed, once it's really nice and dry, plastic bag into the fridge. And if I'm sure that it's really dry, into the freezer. Freeze the bugs out for a couple of days and then um, take it out and store it. And the three things for storage are... Dry, dark, cool. It doesn't need to be in a fridge, but keep it somewhere cool, even temperature, dark and dry. And they're the three things you want for storing seed. Um, if you're really keen for long-term storage, in the freezer. Minus 30 or something like that. Yeah. And uh, if you have the money and you're really into seed saving, make an investment in a really good psychologist or social worker because your seed saving will get out of control and perhaps a marriage counsellor and a new house and a second fridge and then a third fridge and then a big table. Yeah. Um, any questions? Excellent. Now we can go back and swap some more seeds. <laughs>